Welcome to my channel, Chem Hub. Remember, it's Chem Dash and Hub, where we are going to discuss the separation separation of organic mixtures. As we had seen in my last video, how to separate a binary organic mixture. A binary mixture means a mixture containing two organic components, two organic compounds. They could be of the following types, where both the components are solid. Alternatively, one component is a solid, the other is a liquid. And the third option could be where both are liquids. Our focus in this video is only a solid-solid mixture. Let us see how to separate a solid-solid binary mixture. If one of the components is water-soluble and the other is water-insoluble, the separation type is a physical method of separation. However, if both the components are water insoluble, separation is affected by a chemical method of separation. A physical method of separation means that we will be separating the two components by using a physical method like dissolving one component and leaving the other component undissolved. Whereas a chemical method would involve a chemical reaction by the addition of a chemical reagent other than water. Let us now proceed to the determination of type. When we say type, what do we understand? We mean the chemical nature of the two components. So let us see how to determine the chemical type of a mixture, which is the first step. First step would be determination of chemical type. Second would be how to proceed for the separation. We would then proceed for identification of one component. Of the two components, only one has to be identified. And the other component, we have to only report the yield and melting point. So let us proceed to step one, which is determination of type. For determination of type, we will be doing the test that we have studied earlier. The test for an acid, phenol, base, and a neutral component. We take the entire quantity of the mixture given to us, or maybe about three fourths of the quantity, about 0.5 grams of the sample which has been provided to us, to which we will add two centimeter cube of the sodium bicarbonate and check for effervescence. Effervescence would be the making and breaking of bubbles. For this mixture, we did get a positive test and we did observe effervescence. Hence, we will assume that an acid is present. This, that would be our inference. We then filter it and to the filtrate, we will add concentrated HCl. However, there was no reprecipitation. We take a look at the third observation over here, where we get an effervescence, but we do not get reprecipitation. In such a case, the inference would be a water soluble acid may be present. We will check for the presence of a water soluble, confirm the presence of a water soluble acid in a later test. This is only a probability, but since we got effervescence and there is no deprecipitation, the water soluble acid may be present. However, before we proceed further, we must check that the medium is acidic enough. So we will take a drop of the filtrate and put it on a litmus paper, blue litmus paper. If it turns red and we can assume that the medium is acidic enough and still there is no precipitation. Hence, a water-soluble acid may be present. We will then proceed to the next test. Since one component is detected, it will now be called a residue. What is left would be called, solid left would be called a residue because one component has been removed. The residue must always be washed before proceeding for the test. Since an acid was present, we need to remove any traces of it before proceeding further. Hence, we must wash this residue with sodium bicarbonate. So residue is washed with sodium bicarbonate and then washed with water to remove any of these reagents that may be present. The washed residue is then treated with NaOH. It might have dissolved, which is not very clearly visible. Hence, we go to check for reprecipitation by filtering and check the filtrate with concentrated HCl. There is again, no reprecipitation observed for this mixture. Hence, it is assumed that phenol is absent. 
Before reporting absent, please check that the medium is acidic with litmus paper transferring a drop of the filtrate onto a, a blue litmus, it must turn red. And in that case, the medium is acidic, still no re-precipitation would confirm that the phenol is absent. We move on to test three. We, the residue that is obtained after, after this test is washed. Now this time washing is only to be done with water since no phenol is present, so no reagents need to be uh, added. We just need to wash with water and the washed residue is then treated with one is to one HCL. We will sh shake it very properly, filter it and to the filtrate, we will add 20% NaOH. Again, there is no re-precipitation observed. Hence, a base would be absent. But before we report a, uh, the base absent, we need to check the medium, to check the filtrate for the alkalinity, to check that we have added sufficient amount of NaOH. If the amount of NaOH is insufficient, there would be no re-precipitation. So we check for uh, the filtrate alkaline medium of the filtrate, we transfer a drop of the filtrate onto a red litmus paper. It does turn blue, indicating that the medium is alkaline enough, but still there is no re-precipitation, hence the base is absent. At the end of these tests, we do get a residue which remains. It has neither given as a test for a phenol nor a base, hence this residue must be a neutral in a neutral compound which is neither acidic, basic, or phenol. Hence, our mixture type would be water-soluble acid and water-insoluble neutral. But the presence of a water-soluble acid must be confirmed by the following tests. So let us check that out in the next slide. Since only one component is, was confirmed, which was the water-insoluble neutral, the water soluble acid is only a maybe. It's only a maybe and it has not been confirmed. We will proceed for this sequence of tests. We will take the mixture, add water to it, shake it very well and filter it. A few drops of the filtrate are collected on a watch glass placed on a boiling water bath. Once this filtrate is evaporated, we see the appearance of a solid on the watch glass. This confirms the presence of the water soluble component. That means one of the components is water soluble. We can confirm its nature, although we did check for effervescence earlier, we can again check for effervescence. This is how the setup looks like to evaporate uh, the, what, uh, the reference that we had made to in the earlier slide. Uh, how to evaporate the solution. We will put the filtrate onto a watch glass which is placed in a beaker and evaporate the dryness. As you can see, we have got a white residue over here indicating the presence of a water-soluble component. The presence of the water-soluble uh, component in chemical nature can be determined by this test. The residue that we got on the watch glass, we will just dissolve it in water and check with litmus. So red, uh, the blue litmus turns red, indicating that it is an acid or a phenol. And then the mixture is tested with bicarbonate, which gave up a essence when we had done at the beginning, confirming the presence of an acid. So component A is a water-soluble acid. Let us now proceed for separation. The separating reagent for a water-soluble mixture is always water. Irrespective of the chemical nature of the two components, we must remember that whenever one of the components is water soluble, the separating agent is always water and the separation type is always a physical method of separation by dissolution in water. So we will now discard whatever sample was given for determination of type and we will take the weighed packet provided to us. The entire weighed packet is transferred into a beaker to which we add about two test tubes of water. We will stir it very well for five to seven minutes to ensure the entire quantity of water soluble acid is dissolved because we do not want it interfering with the other component. We will then filter this. The residue that is, remains on top will be component B. 
the filtrate contains component A. And we need to wash this residue very well with water to remove any traces of the water soluble acid that is present. All the washings are collected in this evaporating dish. Now to recover our water soluble component, we will evaporate the filtrate on in an evaporating dish on a wire gauze and with continuous stirring till it is almost dry. We will then quickly transfer this evaporating dish onto a water bath. The setup would look like this and then continue heating till complete dryness. This would prevent the charring of the water soluble component. Some of us could even do it directly, the complete the entire procedure of evaporation and drying on the wire gauze with expertise, but it is always recommended the last part of the drying be done on a wire gauze. This would give us the component, which is water soluble, and the water soluble component, remember, is always component A, irrespective of its chemical, uh, uh, chemical uh, nature, whether it is acid-based, phenol, neutral, whatever it is, the water soluble component is always component A, and the other component will be component B. So for this mixture, the component A is water soluble acid, and component B is water insoluble neutral. Now that we have got our two components separated, we need to proceed for identification. For this mixture, we will be identifying the water insoluble neutral compound, which we shall see in the next video. What follows now is a demonstration in the laboratory of this entire process.